Hello, and welcome back to Copilot Live, as the show is now called. In the show, we bring on guests from all of the different Copilot areas and ask them to explain their Copilot and how all of you can use them better. So today we've got a very special guest who is going to teach us how to use probably the most mysterious Copilot of all, which is Copilot for security. Please join me in welcoming my colleague, Rod Trent. Hey, Rod. Good day, Donna. How are you? I am awesome. Uh, thank you for the invite, and I appreciate your introduction to this product. Um, so I'm Rod Trent. I am a program manager at Microsoft in the advocacy realm. I focus on cybersecurity, and imagine that, a person at Microsoft that's also focused on AI. As you said, this is one of the more mysterious co-pilots that we have at Microsoft, but when you think about what it is, it's really truly the mystery that we're trying to solve when we talk about cybersecurity. This is true. So can you just give us a little bit of backstory? Copilot for security, newer on the Copilot, you know, on the pile of right. Copilot's experiences we have across various products. It is one of the newer ones. It's also one of the ones that is a new product to market. It's not added onto a new product or it's not an evolution of an existing product. It's a net net new product. So we can call it Copilot by design. I would agree in some respects, but mm -hmm. I think also in another respect, when you consider what we have been trying to accomplish for the past, oh, a long time, I'd say five years, maybe a little less, but our customers have been involved in helping us trying to consolidate all of these security tools. And historically, customers have had this issue where to solve one security problem within their environment, they'll go buy a tool and then they'll go buy another tool for the next thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously at Microsoft, we have all kinds of tools to help solve that, but it's hard for customers to utilize multiple different consoles. Imagine the amount of inefficiency that that brings. When you talk about Copilot for security, our goal with this thing is to give customers a single user interface that connects to all the security products within their organization, whether it's Microsoft stuff or not. Right. Um, it gives them one single pane where they can go every day and kind of start their general security processes. I love it. So can you tell us who is Copilot for Security for? Is it for security professionals such as yourself or random schmoes on the street like me who are security aware, but we're definitely not an expert? Yeah, let's jump into, I have a screen to share here that will help us with this discussion. Copilot for Security, who is it for? And there's a little bit of reference. You can kind of, how we kind of frame this discussion. All right, so who is this for? Here's a slide that I have. Hopefully that will help with this discussion, help frame who this is actually for and understand that Copilot for Security is a copilot that is tuned very specific to security. However, there's a number of things in the security or cybersecurity industry that we at Microsoft look at. One of those is the severe gap in the skill set. Right? So you see over there, I'm going to jump all the way over to the right just mm -hmm. to kind of start this discussion for security novices. So not only is this going to be a very good tool for people that have been doing security or do security as part of their everyday responsibilities, but it's good for security novices because I can ask questions that I don't know about. How would I, what would be my approach to this thing, mm -hmm. right? And as a security novice, it's going to tell me my approach, give me all the steps, give me all of the information and collateral I need to actually either pass this along to someone that's a better expert or a better, has a better skill set within my security team, or just literally generate a report that I can send to my SOC manager, right? Um, but it's also for threat hunters. Um, we use this a lot at Microsoft with our partners. We have a lot of partners that use this as well. So it really provides capabilities for the full spectrum. It's not just, you don't have to be a security person to do this. In fact, we have a lot of customers that summertime, they have interns, they have people that are interested in cybersecurity, they will come in and join their teams and they'll be able to use Copilot for security and not have to spend six weeks getting up to speed with how that organization works. They can use Copilot for security to do and accomplish that. I like this so much because I am security curious, right? As, as we all are, yeah. I find it to be a fascinating space, but it's an intimidating space to even enter because 
security community, you know, are experts. They're like experts over here. And those of us who yeah. don't want to be necessarily security experts, but be confident enough that, hey, I'm doing my data security right. Hey, I'm, you know, secure access to things right, et cetera, et cetera. This feels like right. a good tool to be able to learn that without feeling like yes. a total fool with asking amateur questions. Right. Yeah. And I, and I would agree with that. I think that's probably a really good approach mm -hmm. for that. Right. Um, we have obviously a number of customers that they don't have formal security teams. In fact, right. a lot of these folks are IT pros, but they are still tasked with doing security and security processes. And they need a tool to help them do that instead of sending them off to security workshops or, yes. you know, enforcing some skill set, they can use this to make them better at their job while they continue to do the other things that they're also responsible for. I love that. So now we know who Copilot for Security is for. What are some use cases, scenarios, activities that people ah, can? Very good. That's um, it's always good. And I, I thoroughly enjoy myself. I'm one of those types of learners. I learn best by putting my fingers on the keyboard mm -hmm. or my hand on the mouse or whatever it happens to be. So yeah, if we take a look at my screen now, mm -hmm. I am, there's two different experiences for Copilot for Security. There's the standalone version, which we're gonna take a look at here, and then there's the embedded version. There's a version of Copilot for Security that when you open things up like Intune or Defender XDR console, Copilot for Security is embedded in part of that. And it actually utilizes the Copilot for Security services within there to help better efficiency make help organizations make their or their processes more efficient and do some things for them. But you can see on my screen here, over the past week, but even more so today, we at Microsoft have been talking about this new Russian threat, mm -hmm. Storm 1679. Mm -hmm. And th Russia is trying to keep people from the Olympics for some reason. I, I don't know where they come up with this stuff, but still, I have Copilot for Security up right here, and I ran this earlier today. It says, tell me about Storm 1679 and supply links to read more information about it. And if you could see that, if I go back and look at this session that I ran earlier, it's going to tell me a few things here. It's going to tell me all about Storm 1679, what it is, where it came from, why it is so important, um, how it might impact the industry, how it might impact different environments, but it also gives me a link. I can go read more about it. It's going to give me a brief summary, but if I'm really, really serious about understanding this, or maybe I have, I think that it might already have impacted or potentially impact my environment, I can go read a little bit more about it. Then I asked it a couple other questions. How would I detect and mitigate this in my own environment? Mm. So it's interesting that Microsoft has reported this, so that's great. Microsoft mm -hmm. reports all these security things all the time. But how does this affect me? How mm -hmm. does this affect my organization? So I asked, how would I detect and mitigate this in my own environment? And then give me prescriptive steps to share with my security team. I'm not just going to hoard this to myself. Again, if I'm a security person who's a novice, and this is of interest, and I think we may be impacted, I want us to be able to do something with this. So I'm going to also get prescriptive steps that I can share with my team so that person that has that skill set or maybe that security expert can help me figure out how to do this within my environment. I could go even further. I could ask it for a KQL query to help create something in Sentinel, hmm. an analytics rule that's going to detect it automatically and alert us when this thing is actually identified within the environment. Okay, this is so cool. I'm like doing evil villain hands. This is so cool. Um, yeah. I, I loved how you started with something that someone like me would be interested in, like, what is this new security threat? What does it mean? Because half the time, looking across 16 different articles, it's very scary, very confusing. So getting a definite yeah. answer that has sources, which is great, very important. And then, does this affect me, yes or no? And then, what can I specifically tell people to do? And I can see this being such a game changer for, you know, the watchers or the IT pro folk who... This may not be their actual job, but it's their, their job to know that this is something that may affect our organization and our time. Well, think about cool. this, too. So that's that's good for novices. But think about what experts do. Yeah. Right. They sometimes eliminate this from their workload because it's just it's whatever. Yeah. Right. That's that's not necessary, but it is actually necessary. If you have something like this, you actually have time to do the research. Yeah. Instead of right. just 
reacting without knowing exactly what the situation is. Right. And I can see this being such an interesting way for people to say, oh, okay, these steps, actually some of these are things I can do, right? And it yeah. gives you a yeah. lot more guided, I don't know, motivation to actually be able to do something versus it being some unsurmountable task that ramping up to this point would be really, really hard. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, again, across the board, whether yeah. you're an expert, you're a partner, you're a novice, mm -hmm. you're just doing some threat hunting. Right? You're just it. kind of trying to check things out. It's good I for love everybody. It. Love it. Okay, cool. I love that. So what else you got? So the important thing I think to highlight here, you saw my prompts, mm -hmm. right? Um, prompting yes. is the gateway drug to all of our co-pilots, mm -hmm. if you want to put it that way. Yes. Learning to prompt is super important. However, yes. at Microsoft, I, I had mentioned we have this standalone experience, but we also have these embedded experiences. If I jump over really quickly mm -hmm. um, to Intune, yeah. which I absolutely love this embedded implementation of Copilot for security. I have this option up here. Maybe I can go troubleshoot some things and Copilot can actually help me with that. I have a device that is non-compliant, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I want to go into that and figure out exactly what's going on. I can explore this with Copilot. When that comes up, guess what? I can learn to prompt. I still need oh. to learn to prompt. But at the same time, if you look at this integration, we're going to give you some suggested prompts to start with. This is a non-compliant device. These are the more common things that you do or you research as part of a non-compliant device. So we have these already. I can show apps on the device. I can analyze an error code, which I don't really have one at this. Mm -hmm. I can actually even just summarize this device. And while this is running, I can go do some other tasks. I can come back and understand exactly what's going on here. But again, once this is done as well, it's going to give me some other suggested prompts. So it's going to lead me through. It's like a story. I can It can lead me through the entire story of how to look at and mitigate this situation. I love this. This is so cool because it's teaching you how to, first of all, ask better questions. But it's also doing a lot yes. of that work for you. Um, because it's kind of inferring, hey, you're probably trying to do this. So let me lead you, let me make a plan and guide you through a plan rather than just you ex thinking of a prompt, you getting an answer. You're like, ah, eh, not what I wanted. Rev the prompt, et cetera. Yeah. 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 I like that. It really does a really good job. And, and, yeah. you know, some of the things, sometimes it, it it's going to give us some prescriptive guidance. Maybe we need to, maybe we need to disable a user or we quarantine mm -hmm. a PC because it's identified through its intelligence that, yeah, this is a situation that mm -hmm. needs to be addressed like right now. So I love it. So the homework you have for everybody is learn to prompt better because you're not just going to use it for Copilot for Security, but you're going to use it across all of our other Copilots and AI products, whether you're building them or you're adopting them out of the box. That's right. And I said it's still necessary to learn to prompt. Copilot for Security can also write KQL queries for you, write really? some beautiful KQL queries, but... I would suggest you still, just like prompting, you still mm -hmm. need to learn KQL because you need to verify that these things are absolutely exactly what is being delivered, right? It's, it's super important because as we are in the early stages with AI, yes. we need to determine that those things that are, but the better that we can prompt, the better that we can address these things, the better off we're going to be. And if you see this, this is a workshop that I created for prompting for Copilot for Security. And while it is branded for Copilot for Security, this is a really good use case for all of our Copilots in learning how to prompt. When I was in school, um, I'm not gonna tell you how <laughs> long ago that was, we used to do sentence diagramming. Yes. I don't know if they still do that or not. They yeah. still do it, sentence they still diagram. do it. They, I did it oh, in school awesome. and some of the kids, they still talk about subject, verb, you know, a preposition and you have to label all them. But it, that's kind of how the breakdown of the prompt is. You're absolutely right. That's what feels vaguely familiar to have that sentence diagrammy thing. Yep. So you so you have your goal, you have your expectation, mm -hmm. and then you get to fill it in with some other stuff. You can make it more intelligent by giving, hey, here's the source. This is where I want you to go look, mm -hmm. or here's some additional context. I want you to do this thing, but I want you to do it in this way, the way that I want you to do it, or the way that I need my manager to for the response to be, right? So if you look at this, there's our prompt, look in Defender and tell me about the entities associated with this incident number 
for a summarized report I can submit to my manager. And that is an absolutely perfect prompt, I right? Love this. But it takes your goal, mm -hmm. right? Give me the entities in that incident. Mm -hmm. The expectation is I get a summarization, but let's mm -hmm. give it some additional context. You yeah. look in Defender instead of Sentinel or some of the other security tools. Mm -hmm. And then I want that report to send to my manager. My manager, some managers love pretty pictures. So that would probably be Power BI. Some managers love spreadsheets. So that mm -hmm. might be a spreadsheet. Who knows? Right. Right. So um, it's just going to produce that exactly the way that I want it to do. I absolutely love it. Rod, thank you so much for joining us and educating our audience. You are always one of the best teachers out there. And I've learned so much from you just reading your blogs and your articles. And this quick 12-minute session on how to use not just security for Copilot, but how to use Copilot to do a task I have no idea how to do. So thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us to learn all about Copilot for security and how to use it, but also how to learn to use Copilot in general to get started on things that you might not be familiar with. Tune in next time for Copilot Learning Hub.